Here are the seven types of DM in Dungeons & Dragons, or other tabletop games. The Nick Fury. The Nick Fury DM wants only one thing, to build a team of superheroes. They're gonna throw insane gear at the party, magic swords, legendary shields, pet dragons, whatever. No build is off the table, Nick Fury wants the players to feel epic. But this isn't pure altruism, oh no, because in the Nick Fury DM's world, everything is an Avengers level threat. They want to run the powerhouse monsters. The Tarask, Tiamat, Demogorgon are all living and coming for you. A normal peasant living in the Nick Fury DM's world would probably be traumatized because it seems like there is a world ending threat every freaking week. These DMs prioritize maximizing the power fantasy. Realism and mundane challenges take a backseat to excitement, novelty, and spectacle. Expect to level up quickly, get all the gear you could ever need to optimize your build, and have plenty of targets to put it to use on. The Nick Fury loves players who give over-the-top performances. They love tense fights, close calls, and action-fueled drama. They are maybe the most likely DM to nudge roles against the party's favorite to crank up the tension. They do want you to win, they just want to see you sweat first. Nick Fury's pair up very well with superheroes, min-maxers, and scientist-type players. The World Builder. The World Builder DM is a creative mastermind. The enemies, the story, even the players themselves are just tiny cogs in a vast, living sandbox. This is a world that turns on its own. If the players spend three months mastering the art of tap dance, the villains aren't gonna wait around for them. Their plans will progress, which means there's a ticking clock and player choices matter. This rewards players who actively participate in world events around them. Urgency and initiative go a long way here. You can't just hang around and wait for the final boss to come to you, you have to go to them. To the World Builder DM, the players are agents of chaos. They have everything else figured out, the only element they can't control is player action. In this sense, players act as rogue agents with the power to subvert the course of destiny. Expect lots of political intrigue and fleshed out NPCs sees with complex motivations, goals, and histories. And warning, these DMs are at high risk of entering an exposition loop. There is a real threat of you asking an NPC for directions and accidentally getting 20 minutes of backstory. World Builder DMs love it when players take notes and come up with solutions to problems that can't be beaten with a sharp sword and a fireball. They're great at incorporating character backstories into their world, but they can also be the most restrictive type of DM. If if your build doesn't work in their universe, you might be told to make another one, which can kind of suck. But of course, the best DMs will always work with you to find a way to make your character concept work in any world imaginable. J.R.R. Tolkien is the guy I think of when I imagine a world builder DM. The Cool Cousin. The Cool Cousin DM is so named because they are like a cool older cousin. They are chill as hell. They literally don't care what happens as long as everyone is having fun. You want to cast a spell as your bonus action? and another spell as an action, sure buddy, go for it. You want to rage to get advantage on an intimidation check? Sure buddy, and hell, add a d6 for creativity. Rules as written is for nerds, and people too up their own ass to let the players have fun, at least according to the cool cousin DM. Rule of cool is a way of life. They do minimal prep, they roll with the punches, and they're more focused on making each individual moment fun rather than creating an overarching balanced narrative. They also have no idea how anyone could ever burn out as a DM. This is the easiest job in the world, right? Cool Cousins usually run funnier games, where players have maximum agency. They're also among the most likely to fudge rolls in a player's favor, or even just ignore rolling entirely and give them an automatic success. Expect lots of laughter, lots of improvisation, maybe a few plot holes, and a relaxed gaming environment. Whew. Oh, hey dude, I haven't seen you in ages. I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3. Oh, that's out? Oh. It's out. The next gen RPG game set in the D&D universe where you can play- You can bang a bear! What? I mean, you can romance a druid who can be a bear. Oh. B but it's an identity-driven adventure where your choices matter and impact the relationships and world around you as you progress. Yeah, yeah, and about the bear. You could basically play D&D, build crazy combos and explore the Faerun as a solo player, or hop online for multiplayer or couch co-op. And you can bang a bear. I feel like you're focusing a lot on that one romance option. 
It's the best game ever. Well, whatever makes you happy, I guess. Baldur's Gate 3 is out now, a story-rich, party-based RPG set in the D&D universe, where your choices shape a tale of fellowship and betrayal, survival and sacrifice. Turn-based D&D combat enhanced with new abilities, unparalleled opportunities, and beautiful storytelling integrated with gameplay. Romance, action, bears, J.K. Simmons, it's all here. It's from the creators of Divinity Original Sin 2, and you don't need to have played the previous Baldur's Gate games to play this one. It's a new story set a hundred years in the future. Baldur's Gate 3, out now, link below. The Boxer. The Boxer is the DM who runs games right out of the box. To them, D&D is basically a board game like Monopoly. You set up the maps, the monsters behave exactly as described in the stat block, and the success or failure of the game is dependent on how well written that adventure is. Many DMs start out as boxers, while they develop the skills and confidence to divert from the page and improvise. They are great at running one-shots and other less sandbox-themed games, because those are a closed system and less likely to go off the rails. To the boxer, running a game is just like cooking a delicious meal. Follow the instructions. Done. As a result, boxers suffer the most from bad or lazy products from publishers. Books that don't include many resources for the DM are almost useless to the boxer, but luckily they know that there are thousands of amazing third-party options out there as well. Now, boxer DMs might sound less creative or somehow worse than other DMs, but that's not really fair. It's more the case that they are happiest running adventures with minimum commitment and agency on their part. If you just want to enjoy a one-shot every now and then, or experience a game as designed, the boxer will deliver that experience in a reliable and fun way. The Minimalist. The Minimalist DM understands the infinite possibilities of the blank page. There is no pen, no paper, no maps, and possibly even no monster stat blocks. This is the ultimate sandbox. There are limitless opportunities when the entire world is shaped by the player's imagination. Minimalists are master improvisers, able to switch up anything around the player's actions to suit the situation. Example, the players want to look for a trap door to sneak out of an inn. Great idea. Idea. They find one, it just pops into existence, and now the party are crawling through a dense, dark tunnel and about to fight a giant spider. Minimalist games can be a little overwhelming for new players who want a little bit of structure, but creative players love them because they understand that no structure means no limitation. Minimalist DMs are also bold decision makers. How many people does that fireball hit? On a map, it's easy to see. In the imagination, it's not so clear. So they need to have the confidence to make calls quickly and with authority to keep the game moving. And of course, the best part is the minimalist DM can game anywhere with anybody. You just need a dice roller wrap and at least one other person. It is the most skill intensive way to DM. It is 100% free, requires minimal prep and gives the most agency to the players. Some DMs hate the lack of defined edges, but minimalist DMs will accept no alternative. Total freedom means total creative power. The Conductor. Step right up, step right up, jump on board the Collector's Railroad and you'll be taken right where you need to go. Conductor DMs have a clear, meticulous plan for the party. They often work tirelessly, planning out an adventure they know the party will enjoy, and so they see it as their job to make sure the party experience that. Conductors often get a bad rep online for removing player agency. And yes, a conductor who isn't ready to tolerate any player behavior that deviates from their plan is a very bad thing. However, flexible conductors prepare awesome events they know will happen at some point, and they thread them naturally into the adventure when appropriate. The party will always end up at the destination, but the conductor will give them the agency to approach problems and choices in their own way. Video games like Mass Effect, which feature dozens of player choices but always end up at the same big set pieces, are a great example of the types of games conductors can run. The Architect The Architect DM is fascinated by mechanical exploration. D&D has a ton of flaws, but to the Architect, 
every problem is a vehicle for creativity. They adore creating their own homebrew and exploring others. They will give monsters crazy abilities. They will give players crazy abilities. What if you could multi-class between two different subclasses? The architect will answer that question with a whole new rule system added into their games. They are the most likely to accidentally break the game, but big explosions and hard resets are just the price of science. To the architect, the players, just as much as the monsters, are vehicles to explore a gaming system. Architect DMs love players who get creative with their builds and will reward it any way they can to push players further. Expect bonus feats, bizarre magic items, and enhanced player options in character creation. Luckily, Architect DMs build on existing rules. They don't tear them all down. It is totally fine to play an ordinary champion fighter in an Architect DMs game. You just might need to turn down their offer for a free magical jetpack if you want to keep things simple. Of course, any DM can have a style that shifts across multiple categories depending on the game or even how they feel that day. And there are a few more toxic types of DMs too, but that probably wants to be its own video. Remember, you can get this beautiful dice set for free by being an early backer to my Kickstarter, Ryoko's Guide to the Yokai Realm. It's a colossal expansion to D&D, with over 27 new races and subclasses, hundreds of magic items and spells, and new rules systems. Including a gargantuan scale kaiju battle system, bringing mechanics for epic Attack on Titan God of War style combat. The pre-launch page is now live, link to that is right here and also down there. Also remember to like and subscribe, check out other videos on the channel, and yeah, that's all I got, see you next time.